Now, experts warn that the country's fourth wave of COVID-19 infections is set to hit at the beginning of December. This could have a devastating impact on the tourism industry as this fourth wave is expected to occur in the months where the country will see most of its tourists. Now, let's discuss the impact this might have on the tourism industry. We're joined by Percy Gorgi, a small tourism enterprise association CEO. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon and welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me and good afternoon to you and good afternoon to the listeners. Mr. Goji, I've been seeing a number of announcements that uh, we are currently seeing specials for South African travelers domestically, you know, and being encouraged by the tourism sector to take the opportunity now to travel. Talk to me about how involved you are with this uh, latest move to encourage domestic travel in, in the country. Well, thank you. Um, look, I mean, it's quite critical as an association we have the responsibility to um, to encourage our members who are operators within the tourism sector but also to make sure that um, you know tourism uh, is equally supported and that we have uh, quite um, you know significant amount of people who understand the importance of going out there to vaccinate mm and make sure that they follow on the government's call out to be responsible citizens, but, but also to make sure that we support the sector so that we avoid, um, you know, people losing jobs because already the hospitality industry in its entirety has been badly affected. So we are involved in, in a way to call out on, on our members, on society at large, on South Africans, you know, to be responsible citizens and make sure that we support government on the drive to uh, to vaccinate. You know, the president has spoken and uh, the health department have already encouraged so many people to make sure that they vaccinate because you would understand that without people vaccinating, it becomes very difficult for even international travelers to come in. You would know that South Africa is listed as a red list country to some countries like the UK which makes it very difficult because those specific countries are in South Africa in terms of tourism, but also they contribute to local jobs. And that's why we are so passionate and we are focused in making sure that every citizen can play their role and support the government's drive to vaccinate, be responsible citizen, don't spread the, the virus, you know, wear your mask in public spaces, avoid gatherings that are uh, irresponsible, you know, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's the objective. Mr. Koji, uh, you know, we, we all know that we are headed to what is now being termed a fourth wave in December and not October as was, you know, originally anticipated. Now, as a sector, uh, are you prepared to deal with, with the fourth wave? Uh, I know you're encouraging uh, a lot of South Africans to vaccinate, but the reality on the ground is that whilst we do have the vaccinations in the country now that are, um, you know, significant, we are still seeing people being hesitant to vaccinate. As an industry, how are you treating and dealing with the anticipated fourth wave? Yeah, I mean, to your point, um, what is important is that people must realize that what, what the government is trying to do and also the business society, I mean, like, for example, you, you would notice that, um, you know, the, the biggest um, you know, healthcare sector has recently announced that they are requesting at least all of its employees to vaccinate so that they can contribute to reduction of the virus. So to your point, um, the alcohol industry was badly affected. So is tourism, hospitality at large. The most important thing is to constantly remind everybody, every citizen, every individual, every uh, potential customer who could be looking at traveling locally, you know, to encourage them to, to do the right thing. Because at the end of the day, um, South Africa's economy will not improve. It will not um, you know, create jobs that we want to create. We can't afford to have more and more people being unemployed and purely because um, some of us are not willing to take responsibility. I think that's the biggest concern. So we have to always, always make sure that 
we do what we can to reduce this. Statistics have shown that over the last couple of days, there has been reduction and government has been looking at, um, you know, opening the country to up to level one, which will be great, but this can only happen if citizens take responsibility. So it is not only up to government to tell us to be responsible, it is also up to us as individuals, as business communities, because at the end of the day, I mean, as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, I can't afford to employ more people if my if my my business is not doing well. So the only way for me to continue employing people is if um, those that are within uh, the communities are supporting my effort. And this can only be done through following the rules. Uh, I I understand that a lot of people might not be convinced about uh, the vaccine, but I mean, I have taken the vaccine myself. Um, I think it's in the best interest of, of you know, um, society at large so that we become more responsible and more supportive to the sector. Because I believe that um, if we don't do that, we are holding the country back. We are, we are having indirectly and directly impact on the economy and tourism will never open. I mean, you would appreciate the fact that countries like, um, you know, that are developed have already um, emphasized on the importance of people being vaccinated. And as a result, their tourism activities have opened, you know. Um, we, we now going on the on the fourth wave. Hopefully, um, when that happens, a lot of people would have vaccinated so that we can begin to have more and more tourism uh, activities happening in the country. And our members can also be able to interact, take people on tours, you know, add value to the economy so that government can be able to have an additional tax base that allows more revenue to come in so that we have uh, services uh, being delivered to our people. Now, before we get into those tourism activities very quickly, we know that your sector, as you've rightfully indicated, has taken a very hard knock, you know, during um, this, um, this lockdown uh, because of uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Can the sector afford to take another hard lockdown? I mean, I'm looking at the numbers still. I know that they've been reduced. I know that there are, are you know, um, uh, rumors or, uh, um, you know, um, uh, definitions of maybe we should go back to uh, a lockdown level one and so on and so forth. But taking into consideration what we are seeing and the coast uh, with uh, KZN, Western Cape, those numbers are still relatively high in the country, including the Eastern Cape. Uh, can this sector afford another hard lockdown? Not at all. I mean, that's a very critical question. I believe that, um, you know, to avoid that as, as, as a sector, again, it goes back to us taking responsibility. You know, um, government has called out on everyone as part of the Small Tourism Enterprise Association. Our objective is to try and save jobs which indirectly will contribute to the well-being of the people. Now, by people not willing to take uh, the jab, they are contributing to, you know, the exacerbation of the condition, of the situation. Um, you, we cannot afford to, to be taken back as a result. I mean, you would agree with me that our economy has performed uh, not so good over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. There's been a constant decline across, but purely because um, of lack of economic activities. And some of these activities constitute to lack of conferencing that we used to have before. We used to fly in uh, millions of people who would fly into South Africa. South Africa is such a beautiful country wherein um, we need to constantly promote it as a destination of choice. So um, by, the, by, by the fourth wave coming, we are trying to prepare and avoid a situation where, uh, um, you know, we will end up being on, on the hardest lockdown again, where people will go back to square one, which is not what we want. We want the markets to open. We want people to be free, but also be safe. We care enough about people's well-being. We understand that 
everybody who is part of um, you know society makes a big contribution we still need our communities because our businesses survive on everybody being able to travel in the country but not only traveling throughout South Africa you know uh, traveling um, across you know um, because we, we aim to make sure that South Africa continue to be on the map despite the challenges we face today with COVID. Is there a concerted effort from your industry to incentivize South Africans to travel? I mean, uh, whilst, we, whilst some of us know that you know, there are those packages that are affordable, most South Africans seem to think it is, it is very expensive to travel in this country. Of course, but I mean, part of what we are doing, we, have, we work with the likes of South African tourism. We have uh, a campaign called Short Left and uh, our members subscribe to that so is us you know as, as 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 operators as the travel sector so part of the incentives that we've introduced in the market i mean we we've encouraged uh, property owners hotel owners airlines which they have taken the liberty to listen to us and partner with us you know to make the rules a little bit less uh, stringent so like for instance if you were if you booked a holiday and you wanted to cancel or postpone we're not going to charge you a penalty these are the kind of lobbying that we are making across the industry so that instead of cancelling uh, those that are employed within the hotel can continue to trade so the money doesn't have to go back to you as a, as a client but rather we keep it in you just postpone for a later date where there are no penalties I mean that's part of the contribution we are trying to make but also with the airlines they've been really 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 uh, lenient uh, based on the situation I mean um, we we're also hoping to to lobby for more so that come the new financial year in 2022 People are still encouraged to travel because, you know, tourism is the most interesting sector in a sense that if you look at statistics, you would learn that we have been employing more people because, you know, it doesn't require highly skilled individuals. This is the most uh, job creating part of the economy that doesn't really demand a lot of expertise. You know, you can recruit people in a shorter period of time. You can provide them with training and they can provide the services in a professional manner. So this becomes quite important because if we become more stringent, it doesn't help the sector because more and more people will not travel if we have, uh, you know, um, our, our, our partners such as property owners have imposed difficult rules. It would be impossible for us to even support them in return because at the end of the day, we have to do what makes sense, what is quite um, logical, and also what is quite practical. We have to be really, really practical. And tourism is one of those. We, we sell experience. So experience comes with effort, and effort requires one to constantly be considerate of your clientele. So that's what we're doing as an association. Mr. Gorgi, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate it.